Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, a special segment with the speaker. Also, the V Team takes a look at Medicaid fraud. And the Love Gov, he's got it hot for strange. Luther, that is. Boy, it's hot. This is hot. Never got this hot in Brooklyn. It's like Africa hot. Tarzan couldn't take this kind of hot. Welcome to the jungle, baby. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. Welcome to the Voice of Alabama Politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by the V Team. Welcome. Good morning. On. Good morning. Hi, Glad to see you guys. Just when you think it cannot get any weirder, it gets more strange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Governor Robert Bentley this week appointed Luther Strange to become the uh, U.S. Senator taking the place of uh, Jeff Sessions. And Beth, the blowback has been swift and brutal. I mean, yeah, people were asking me all over the country, who do you think is going to get this seat? What do you think is going to happen? And I didn't think there was any way, the week that Don Siegelman came home from federal prison, that they could be this dumb. But lo and behold, look, they were. I mean, this is just proof the governor doesn't have any political capital left. Susan? It was all over the place. I mean, everybody's saying quid pro quo. They are, and, and whether it is quid pro quo or not, the optics are awful. I mean, just awful. I mean, uh, four days before Trump was was elected, um, you had the had Luther Strange sending a letter to the uh, legislature saying, "Please stop any impeachment proceedings because we've got this thing going on." And now. It's really bad optics. Well, I mean, Jack, I mean, he's, he told them to stop, and the, the impeachment hearing was only about one person. That's, that's Bentley. And now mm -hmm. Bentley has appointed his nemesis to... Uh, I don't think it's any secret they don't love each other. Or certainly no, didn't until no. earlier in the week. Yeah. I would like to believe that there was no deal made, that, there was, that it was not nefarious. Um, and, and I really want to believe that. What I don't like more than anything was Bentley um, pulling the wool over the eyes of the legislature, the impeachment committee, and the citizens of Alabama, but worse, the 19 people who didn't get the appointment to the Senate. Because if that was a charade, shame on you, Robert Bentley, because all those people spent time preparing to go to D.C., thinking they had a chance, particularly that list of six there at the end, and I think that's a shame. Well, I know at least he told two individuals that they were his second pick. Oh, and he also <laughs> told two, two separate individuals it was the hardest call of the day. You can't have two hardest calls of the day by, by the way the English language works. Yes, Sorry. superlatives. Well, it depends uh, but, on if that calls a FaceTime call. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I the love thing that, too. that <laughs> <laughs> wow. The part of this that really bugs mm -hmm. me is that y'all sat there and watched the governor walk into that grand jury. Y'all sat there and watched. We've, we've got tangible proof that there was I an investigation pictures. happening. And now they're saying, we never said there was an investigation. Never we never said. We never really. But, but the fact is, like whether the, the attorney general or now Senator Strange it actually said we were investigating Governor Bentley or not, what he meant to tell that impeachment committee was, y'all hold on, we're working on this first. And whether he directly said there's an investigation into the governor or not, that's what he intended them to believe. And that's what Matt, Mike Jones wrote in his response. I tell you, Luther Strange is going to have trouble running in 2018, I believe. Mm -hmm. But if he had come out and said, 
Governor Robert Bentley asked me to take the position as U.S. Senator. I refused because I have a job. Right, right Jack? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, there was a rumor out there it was going to be Jim Byard. Uh, who was at ADEC and is a friend of Bentley's, and that, the, that he was going to be a placeholder, and then the governor was going to call an election with 120 days. Right. And Luther would have won that anyway because yeah. he, you know, mm -hmm. he's able to raise money with his D.C. contacts. So he would have been the next senator probably anyway. I don't know why he didn't do that. Now well, that and, and two, if, if, he'd have, if he'd waited until 2018, he'd have been a shoe-in. I mean, if he'd have stepped back, like Beth said, I've got my job to do, I'm going to finish the job that the people elected me to do, I'll see it in 2018, and there's I no refuse, way. And I refuse to trade my integrity for an, an appointment. Yeah. I want the people to elect me outright. Well, Most of these guys are trade their integrity for a $2 of hooker. Uh, <laughs> but well, here's Bentley's biggest problem now is that he has a House of Representatives many of whom are furious at him about oh, this appointment. Right. And there is an impeachment committee that is probably about to crank back up. They're Trump that's his bit. biggest they are. They are. And, and you know, this thing uh, about the 120 days, Bentley's saying he's not going to have the special election until 2018. He's announced that. Now, Representative Christopher England, who's a pretty smart cookie, stated the statute that says, oh, no, 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 you got to do it now. Now, you can't wait two years to do it. And mm -hmm. so if someone will sue, I think you got a court battle well, to, to, to it, clarify the law. And the whole point here, too, is the statute says forthwith. I think right. the special election must be held forthwith. But the, the thing here is they're saying it's too expensive to hold a statewide election. Remember, we have a U.S. senator and now an attorney general that we could put on the ballot. And these are the same people that brought up a special election in September of 2012 to approve mm -hmm. some money getting moved around when they could have put it on the November ballot that same year, but they chose to spend the money on it. So this isn't about money. Make no mistake. Now, I don't have a problem with them waiting until November of 18 to have this election. I really don't. I don't, I don't want to incur the expense of a special election. But if by law it says we have to, well, then we have to. Well, uh, we need to define what is forthwith. Well, we I, need to put a, what is, what's the meaning of forthwith in our, our law? Don't I you, mean, it means as soon as possible. I mean, I think well, that's but, what it basically means. But they need to solve it. They need to say, okay, okay that's, right. that's do we got, de minimis. Yeah, we, we got about a minute and a half left. I want to talk about Medicaid fraud. We reported this week that states that have a false claim act with a Quay Tim, that's a whistleblower act. Mm -hmm. They are uh, bringing in more cases on uh, Medicaid fraud. I mean, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, they are bringing in bucket loads, Beth, because they have this false claim act. Basically, yeah, basically what they do is if I work, you know, for a doctor and I know that that doctor is fraudulently filing Medicaid claims, I can contact the government and say, look, here's what's going on. And then for me being truthful, I get a percentage. Some states do 10 percent, some do up to 25 percent. But I get a personal kickback on whatever's recovered. So people have this incentive to come forward and tell the truth. Well, we don't even have a false claim act in our statutes. It was they tried to get it passed last year. Mm -hmm. It got killed. And I, I think it's just due to the lobbyists. I think it is, too. But the thing people need to understand about this, too, is that when those cases are won, or when, when that individual is prosecuted and that money comes back, the federal government takes on another 10% right. to, to come to back the to state. the unit. So and we're losing millions right, right. now because we don't yeah. have this law. Plus, right. You, you can't prosecute the cases. And most of them get settled. You know, when a big hospital or somebody like and that or a clinic. Let's be honest, too. Wrongdoing. Medicaid fraud is not somebody like me right. who's getting a prescription on it. So right. Medicaid fraud right. is big. It's yes. systemic We're institutional hundreds fraud. hundreds of millions of dollars. So sure. then Stephanie mm -hmm. Azar shouldn't be mad at us. She should be mad at the legislature for not having a law. And like another this. point I want to get in here is that the federal government will pay 75% of the personnel costs or any office Absolutely. costs for that unit. Absolutely. Wow. Well, we're going to have to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back.
Azia Medical Spa offers a relaxing experience using customized skincare treatments and full line of physician grade products with professionals that can assist you in determining which treatment options will best help you achieve your desired results. Azia's massage therapies are popular for rejuvenation and relaxation, as well as relief of tired, aching, and sore muscles. Voted the best medical spa in Birmingham for three years in a row. Visit aziamedicalspa.com to schedule your appointment. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Susan, the state of the state was, I mean, the sinking of the Titanic was faster. I mean, it was just It was laborious. brutal. Yeah. It was brutal standing in that room. He, I spoke for almost an hour. Uh, it, it was very much like last year's speech, except for last year, I think he was an astronaut. This year, he was an Olympic runner or something. Yeah, with a bad something. leg or something. Yeah, it was really a weird. Minister. Yeah. There was a lot of mixed metaphors in there, and mainly, I mean, Bentley and Jack said... Maybe Claire wrote the speech, because yeah, she going, can mix a metaphor was, better yeah. than anybody I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we and, think we know that speech. There was an Olympian in the woodpile, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you've got... Bentley talked, he wants $800 billion in prisons. He wants more health insurance. He wants to do away with the taxes on groceries. He wants, he wants, he wants. Jack, when I talked to the Speaker of the House and the President Pro Tem, they went, where's the money coming from? If he from? wants all this, he better move to California because it ain't going to happen in Alabama. No, yeah. we can't pay for I mean, what we've got. The grocery now. tax, $250 million. Right. Now, he was on 60 Minutes, if I remember correctly, like many moons ago, defending the grocery tax, saying, well, that's the only way we can capture tax money from poor people. Well, I think that was like 10 or 12 years ago. Well, remember, too, now, there's, well, there's, wrong, two, there's two competing grocery tax bills, too, and that's like a whole other segment for another day. But which one he goes with will say a lot because one of them is a very regressive way of replacing the money and one of them is very progressive. Well, and the thing, Beth, is that he didn't give a plan for anything. He just mm -hmm. said, I want this, I want that, I want this. He's right. like a, like a two-year-old. Not, I want this because, or anything, or, or how we're going to pay for well, it, or mm -hmm. any, any plan and, at all. And the soaring rhetoric that he used did not sound like Bentley's voice. I mean, Jack, you've written speeches. You know, first thing, you got to understand that person's voice. Well, yeah, know your audience and, and know your person when you're crafting a speech. I mean, it, it sounded like the same one that Ms. Mason helped craft last year. Beth, she was there. She was seated in the balcony where the first lady normally sits, which was strange enough. But her, her husband, husband was, was with, with her, her. Oh my sitting gosh. in between her and the governor, tech, you know, kind of in the space. It's that, this is oh. so weird. This is the most bizarre. Oh, thing. you know, the, the really bizarre thing was that she was moved to tears at the end of his speech, and I'm standing there thinking she moved herself to tears with her own words. Really? Yeah, because she's saying, "How are we going to pay for all this?" <laughs> you know. Well, I got this prison. It, it sounds so much like last year, and I know that Ms. Mason had a part in that. But I actually emailed the governor's office, Yasmin, and asked, and. Uh, Crickets, crickets, nothing, no response. But on the serious matters here, you know, it, it all sounds good. He wants to build roads. He wants to build bridges. We need a 3% tax. That's what Mac McCutcheon, the speaker, is saying about a 3% tax. That's what he brought last year. But, Jack, it's hard to convince the people of Alabama to pay more well, taxes. Well, the, the people of Alabama really are, I, I think they would understand because services are, we don't have mental health that's worth a damn in Alabama. Our prisons are in terrible condition. Roads, education's in the tank. I mean, where's the money going to come from? We're going to have to raise it. And we're not able to raise it now. We're going to have to think about it. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Bentley was saying during the speech how we didn't need new taxes. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, isn't this the same guy that came with those six or nine taxes 
you know, year before last, you know, and they stand up there talking against taxes. He doesn't know which way is up half the time because he's not thinking for himself. That's right. the difference, is he's not getting the full story because they're not, they're, his gatekeepers won't let him see what's being said in the media, so he doesn't know what's going on, and then he, from one day to the next, he flips and flops based on whatever somebody's telling him, and that's, that's not the way to office. run a government. The craziest yeah. thing to me is when he's selling the prisons, you know, it's really, it's more like $1.5 billion dollars the people of Alabama are going to pay. He went into this thing about how he went to a church service at a prison and they held up their tattooed hands. Now, I don't know about you. Is, is, was it like this or like this? I he did it like this. Hands up, don't shoot? Like, yeah. What, but, Holy hands, but they were tattooed. All right, y'all yeah. are nitpicking right now. Come on. Well, it this was is awful. also, the, but this is also the, if he you're was not awful. a Christian, you're not my brother or sister yeah. kind right. of governor. And he, he kept using biblical references all over the place. I they think, were out of place. They I didn't think, have context in what he was saying. I think okay, there's something right, smelly. Right. There's something very smelly with this prison thing. Oh, I don't disagree with you on prison that. Prison ministries and all that. Not that there's anything wrong with them. I'm serious. I've been involved in prison ministry. But I tell you, there's just something that's... Yeah, there's something you know, sticky, something smelly. Wrong. Well, uh. let, let's, let's move on. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, when the started session this year, uh, the Alabama political reporter and the V had over... We had five reporters on the ground, Beth. You were with us the first time. You were our first reporter with Brandon Mosley, and uh, mm -hmm. things have changed, haven't they? They have, and to the point that I don't even feel like I got to be up at the state house. I know y'all got it under control. I can just <laughs> sit back and watch the Ale Politics Twitter feed and see what's coming next. I mean, but the, the work that that APR does. I mean, this is a team that I'm so proud to be a part of because y'all don't back away from what the facts are, and you have enough people now to report the whole story and to tell what's going on. And, and I've said to people, and I'll say it again where the viewers can hear, if there's ever something that y'all report wrong, y'all know where to send the facts. We will yeah. always present as many facts as we can get. We can, and I gotta tell you, it's, it's so nice because the first year that Bill and Brandon and I were down there, uh, they, they were booking committee meetings, you know, so simultaneously, so one reporter couldn't get to this other. Now we can cover it all. Well, you can't hide from us now. Uh, and that, that goes back to where we were, state of the state. Jonathan Barbie was there, and he's going to give you a taste of what it was like to be at the state of the state. Tonight, Governor Bentley addressed members of the legislature in his annual state of the state address, where the big topics again this year were prisons, education, and jobs. However, many of the state legislators are concerned about the details and how the plan will work. We are here to look at the education budget as well as the general fund budget and to address many issues that were not addressed in his speech, even though he did mention corrections and how important it is. But we've got to find ways to address it and the revenue to do that as well. I think the prison issue is something we have to address, but I think key to his um, plan is building new prisons and shutting down 14 or 15 facilities. And I think that's easier said than done. There were a lot of moving parts tonight, and I'm going to have to. I've got going to sit back and, and, and try to talk with the governor and kind of see what his priorities are. Uh, but but you know I, I can't. I, I didn't get a clear path to where we want to go tonight. Uh, but my my goal is to see exactly what the governor wants to focus on and try to help him there. You're talking about an 800 million dollar bond issue that we're going to have to be making payments on. Uh, you've also got the federal court case that will require us to take some kind of action. So there's a, there's a lot of discussion about it, and, and all of the, the debate and the discussion going on right now is good discussion. Many legislators are excited about the 2017 session and are interested to see how the governor's bold plan will play out. Reporting from the Capitol, I'm Jonathan Barbie for The Voice of Alabama Politics. Well, that's going to do it for this segment of The V. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back with a special segment with speaker Mac McCutcheon. He's going to tell you a little bit about what's really going on.
so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Each week during the legislative session, we have the privilege to sit down with the Speaker of the House, Mac McCutcheon. Welcome, Mr. Speaker. Good to be with you. Thank so, you for coming over. Well, we love this place and, and we enjoy speaking with you and you informing our audience of what's going on. Something very exciting and new happened at the beginning of this session this week. You had a special prayer breakfast. Would you tell us about it? We sure it? did. The first ever. We had a uh, speaker's prayer breakfast, and the, uh, uh, it, the, the breakfast itself was designed to have legislators come together and have a worship service. And so the senators and House members came together, and those who uh, chose to attend came over. We had a great crowd. We uh, uh, heard a message from Pastor Tim Lanier in Huntsville, Alabama, and uh, uh, Representative A.J. McCamill sang a solo for us, and uh, everybody really enjoyed it. It was very good. It's kind of a new thing to start off with. I mean, I know this is new, mm -hmm. but you're really placing an emphasis on bringing people together faith, unity, and doing what's right, and that's setting the tone. Well, it does. It, 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 it helps everybody realize that, uh, that we, uh, we need to focus uh, on uh, uh, those things that are important, and such as, uh, you know, our faith, uh, hope, you know, our forgiveness and grace, and loving each other and working together. That's important. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, it, it may be uh, not disparaging anyone else who's ever sat in that seat, but kind of a brand new day as we've discussed before because of your humbleness and uh, although you are a very strong individual if people are, got to know your background they know that yeah yeah um, we've got a lot of bills I know that are coming up uh, the governor uh, this week laid out a, a very aggressive agenda of prisons of uh, looking at better health care for the poor and elderly, it, looking at uh, uh, expanding construction projects, especially roads, mm -hmm. and uh, a number of other things. Uh, the, one of the things that we sort of walked away with was how do we pay for everything we want? I mean, isn't there some limitations on what we can do? Well, there is, and, and, and that's, the, that's the question. I mean, we, uh, we have so many needs out there before us, but at the end of the day, we do have to pay for those needs. Uh, one of the issues that he brought up was the um, food tax. Right. Uh, to eliminate the food tax. I think that's a great idea. And the House has actually uh, had some pieces of legislation over the years dealing with uh, uh, doing away with the food tax. Uh, but at the end of the day, for every dollar that we do away with, how do we replace it? Right. And that is the question and the challenge that we face. Well, we're always scrambling for money. There's uh, never an end to scrambling for money. And that while the tax on groceries is something that most states don't do, what could we replace it with? Is there any ideas out there? Well, I, I, I told several of the members today, we were talking about the state of the state last night and talked with several of the members in the House today, and, and, and we were just talking about the food tax, and if we eliminated some part or all of it, uh, what would be something we could replace it with? Right. And so far, we don't have any ideas yet. Right. So, uh, just trying to encourage the discussion. Well, because we are tax. I mean, we are a state that doesn't have high taxes on anything. Yes. Uh, you know, the idea of getting better roads and bridges for a three, three cents gas tax is making mm -hmm. people lose their mind out in, in Birmingham and other areas. It's, it, it, uh, yeah. of course, I, I've carried the, the gas tax bill last year, and so how well I know how people feel about that three-letter word tax. Right. And so, uh, but at the end of the day, when you look at public safety, uh, you look at the uh, number of track accidents that we're having in the state, which now we are becoming one of the top 
states in the nation with having traffic accidents with fatalities. Uh, that's a direct result on our public safety and having troopers on the road. We're short on our troops. There are just so many yeah. agencies that need help. When we, uh, you know, Susan and I travel every week, you know, six hours back and forth to, to our farm uh, and then to uh, down here. And, you know, we count how many times we see troopers. And it's not even once a week. Yeah. And it's just, and it's scary because people are on the highway going 80, 90 miles an hour. Like, we're just sitting still. But as we've talked before, you got to have infrastructure to have growth, to That's have exactly economic right. growth. That's right. A um, couple of other things that look to be interesting that we've, we've talked about before. Uh, are we making any progress on redistricting uh, as the committee getting getting further on the line? We are. We are. And, and uh, uh, keeping in mind the redistricting issue, it's going to be a priority as we move forward. And so we, uh, the smaller committee that works, uh, that, that stays in place during the quadrennium, uh, they have issued a request for the Lieutenant Governor and I to expand the 22-member committee. Okay. And so uh, the Lieutenant Governor has made her appointments. I just finished making my appointments. So that committee now has been named and they're ready to go to work. The Monument Bill was this week. Uh, I know that, that's that been a big uh, issue. Uh, can you give us a preview of what we might see next week? Uh, I, well, I think uh, as far as committee goes, uh, we're, we're working on some resolutions. And to finish out this week, we'll have a couple of resolutions dealing with the uh, small business uh, advocate in the governor's office. We have a resolution recommending that the executive branch set up a small business uh, advocate over there where that the small business people can have some go-to point, if you will. And then the other issue that we've got is the budget reform continuation. Right. And we're going to work on those two resolutions. As we move into next week, we'll start addressing uh, about two or three more resolutions, and then we'll move into sunset. And then we'll start working some bills on the regular order calendar. Well, we appreciate your service to the state, and we appreciate you joining us. And we're looking forward to this session. Well, I'm, we're looking forward to it, too. The challenges are still there, yeah. but everybody is upbeat, and they're ready to go to work, so we're excited. So as we are able to visit here in our chamber, then hopefully we can report some good successes. Well, we hope so, too, and, and we're, we're happy to have you with us, and you're always welcome. Good deal. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank I appreciate you, it. All right. We want to thank Speaker McCutcheon. Each week, he's going to sit down with me and we're going to discuss the week that was and the week that's coming. I want to thank you for watching The V. You watch us, because we watch them.